Live, baby. Well, almost. Are we? We're live. This thing doesn't didn't do the countdown. The Riverside didn't do the countdown. It didn't? Well, it's 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 live. We're live. Okay, we are we're live. live. All right, good. We are live. We are live. We are live. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to mute it on my other screen, so everybody's listening to that. Okay, here we go. We're better. We're good. I muted it. Nice. We're yes. in. Guys, how have you Friday been night. since what is about 41 minutes ago when I last Zoomed with you? Is everything okay between then and now? Thank, couldn't yeah. be better, mate. Could not. Are you in a better mood, mood now, Peter? Dude, I'm always in a great mood. This morning. Sometimes you have to lay down the law when you're dealing with fucking pricks. Like, no, you, you were a little sir. sulky. You were I'm a sulky. little sulky. You were sulky. I'm not sulky. All right, I'm, I'm listen, always if fucking you are joining us for the light. first time, the sulky guy who looks like he got kicked out of the Sons of Anarchy is Retep. He is the <laughs> bro... The, uh, what are you, professor? That's right, with a false PhD. Uh, yes, sir. It, but below him, Mr. Patrick DeLuca, the producer, and Best. myself, your host, the broologist, would like to welcome you to our maybe fourth live show ever. Thanks for tuning in. It's lots of fun. If you're not watching it live, you can go and check it out on YouTube later. It should be fun. And if not, you're listening on iTunes, something like that. Thank you for that as well. Retep usually explains all that. I don't really know where to watch any of it. Um, what's up, it. guys? Hey, look, up, my friend. I like what's going on right now. We've got a lot of the regular, the usual suspects: Daniel Cool, Jason Abs, Doctor Hyena, Real Alaska Fishing Charters. Jenna Don't forget Faber. Jenna Favor. Jenna Mitri Favor is joining us again. <laughs> yeah, we got <laughs> Axel. We got someone named Axel Bankston. Three thirty in the morning, wherever he is. Jesus, Noel so, Gray, Celebos. I like it. It's in the Christmas. So wait, spirit. I I, I want to do something. This is important. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since we last important. zoomed I about an hour or so ago, I something has blown my mind. It has blown my mind. Patrick, you're not going to believe this. Retep already knows it. Will, WT Willie, oh, would you join God. us on screen for a second? Gentlemen, how goes it? All right. I don't know if Will's <laughs> ever been on the live before. I don't think, <laughs> only in uh, text form, I think. Okay. Well, Will is joining us right now. Now, Patrick, look at Will. He He's a handsome fellow, wouldn't you say? Yeah, he's a good looking yeah, guy. Sure. He's got a, a you know, hands. very generic haircut under that hat, wouldn't you think? Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't you go ahead and pop that lid off and uh, show the people what you're working with under there? Pretty normal looking. Is it though? Let's, let's, is let's it? do a little profile going there. Let's... Wait for it. Wait, Wait for it. Sure. <laughs> oh, long hair he's got fucking you. longer hair than I do. This, can this you believe that? I had no idea. I've, I've never seen him without a hat. I've never seen him without a hat either. This was a <laughs> he, he's he logged Dude, on he looks like, like Edward Scissorhands. He logged, <laughs> he logged on a couple minutes fake. before you, and he had a man bun on it. I thought it was fake. That's real. <laughs> oh yeah. I just figured you're not wearing a hat, Pat. I can't wear a hat today. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no. Daniel, the no hat day. Daniel Cool says Will is a solid twelve out of ten, dude. No homo, boys. Yeah, that's that's real. That's a good point. Period. Party in the back. Uh, so people are asking what we're drinking. If the drinking game's going to happen, all right. Let's let's get into Thanks, it. Thanks, Will. We you look beautiful. Um, I'm drinking a delightful concoction uh, introduced to me by one of my closest lady friends, uh, K Fab Patrick. You know her, Kristen. Sure. Um, yeah. It is a lime Lacroix and tequila mix. Very simple. Uh, it's really, boy. it's really nice. Very sounds tasty tequila is aggressive man i love tequila it's an upper I, exactly nobody ever has a bad time <laughs> drinking tequila what do you guys that is far the farthest have, uh, thing from the truth tito's vodka and blood orange soda hmm. it's so good that i'm worried i'm gonna drink it too fast so <laughs> rich up let me know uh i got a little just wine apothic red blend ten dollars a bottle at your local grocery store and three tall boy modellas, my standard live recording. Uh, Very nice. Nonsense shenanigans. Very nice. Very nice. Will's getting, Will's getting some love on the YouTube live. Lucas <laughs> says, says Will is a whole snack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, man. That's good. Will looks like the Joker in the Dark Knight before he went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> please keep these coming, brosters. If you are following along live, please, please send us more of your comments on WT Willie. He's the man behind the camera, or he doesn't get his face shown very often, and now you've seen why based on that haircut. So, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's good. It's good to hear that the people love him. But uh, 
this is fun. You know, thanks to you guys. Thanks to all the brosters. We're doing more lives. You guys love uh, signing on, engaging with it. Um, you know, it's a lot of fun to have you here. Love answering your questions. So, yeah, I think we'll keep doing lives here and there. So, thanks yeah, for Yeah, but hey, real quick, us. before we get into, uh, you know, our first wild times type of topic here, I think we have a big announcement to make starting next week. I love I love announcements I don't know anything about. What yeah, is it? what are you talking about? Uh, well, starting next week <laughs> on Monday, which is, uh, I don't know, the, the, whatever date Monday is, the 21st. So starting Monday, the 21st, we will not just have our weekly podcast. Oh, yeah. We're going to have daily content. That's right. It's new. It's not just clips of the podcast. New content every day on the Wild Times podcast YouTube uh, where we just – do like really silly shit, yep. uh, but like everyone's favorite stuff from the podcast, people fucking love when we talk about could five hyenas be five wolves. Um, so we will have a new clip that's not in the podcast every day of the week, Monday through Friday, moving forward on YouTube. On YouTube. That's right. Yep. Only on YouTube. So for those of you who are listening, and there are thousands of you who haven't <laughs> subscribed to the YouTube. It's true. Go to the YouTube. Here are little five, 10 minute clips every day. Just get a little fix. That's right. Yeah. That'll be good. That will be good. Well, guys, I say we get yeah. into it. Um, Let's do it. But before we get into the what's in the news, a couple pretty fun Brosner shout outs. Um, All right. So my, I think my favorite one is Ice Freak in T found the frog tat. Yep. Sent us a message. Remember the frog tat on the knees? WT Willie, oh, yeah. can you pull up the frog tat the guy one who more could, time? Who could make his frog? The frogs ribbit with it by flexing his knees. Yeah, his knees mm -hmm. could ribbit. It was incredible. Yeah. Well, this was, I mean, how mysterious was this freaking tattoo? It was like, who the hell knows where that has come from? Well, Ice Freaking T found it, um, sent it to us, and found the frog tat guy, which I think was incredible. Um, just the fact that someone listened to the show was like, all right, I'm going to go on this mission. I'm going to figure out who this guy with this tattoo is, and uh, and found it and sent it our way. Wait, so this is, hang on. So what's this link in the show doc? Is this actually the dude, Ink of, Ink of King? Yeah, you click that and then it takes you to Brent something or other and, and he's the guy. <laughs> Wait, so where, where does Brent live? Because we were talking about, we were profiling him. We I were. Think most of us thought he lived in Portland. Uh, <laughs> where, where does he live? I, I, no. dying. I don't know. Iced freaking tea. Let us know. Figure it out. Where? Where does this guy live? What's his story? Why does he have frogs on his knees? These are the questions. These are looks the like questions. Barcelona, Barcelona potentially, or that's ah, where this shit. That's where uh, the tattoo parlor or the artist that posted this. Uh, that's where the Instagram is from. Okay, I could see it. Okay, Ratep, you're getting a ton of love on the YouTube live right now. So Adi asked, "What?" He's like, "I might be missing something here. Why does Ratep get bullied so much?" I love it though. Yeah. Yes. Because uh, I'm the best looking saying, and most entertaining. That's people right. are saying because he can take it. He's just the easiest victim. Uh, <laughs> then, then Miguel Brito says, we don't deserve Ratep. He's too good for us. Oh, oh this, this melts my that's fucking nice. heart. Yeah. That's nice. You, you guys are wonderful. Uh, um, yeah. Forrest, <laughs> yeah. another Brosner professor, Chibichanga, sent us a, uh, a video <laughs> okay. uh, of Kru Kruger National Park, which is in South Africa or Kenya? Where's uh, it's in South Africa. It's a rare occurrence. It is a video that's been been captured of a hippo fighting a rhino. Oh, this boy. Is, this is the type of shit that our fucking audience lives for. Yeah. True. Too this, true. This was WT, actual... you got to pull this up. I, I watched this video when it circulated like th a few days ago. Um, it's awesome. I, and we'll break it down when, when Will pulls it up. But yeah, Ritep, so, you're right. We actually talked we, about this. We we voted on this. So might we, we have yeah. an opportunity here to see who would actually win in real life? Uh, well, I wouldn't say it's completely conclusive. But my favorite part <laughs> yeah. of the video is the fact that both animals are using their tools. And what I mean by that is the hippo is totally opening his mouth, uh, being aggressive, showing his tusks. The rhino is like, yeah, look, guy, like, I, I, I get it. You're like, you're the chubby guy at the bar who's trying to, you know, flex. I could kill you in a heartbeat if I wanted to, and I'm not going to. I'm going to just keep grazing over here, you know, maybe pay you a little bit of attention uh, and then go back to my thing. I mean, he's just like, he does nothing. And then, and then the hippo actually chases him off, which is pretty funny. Um, wow. And then eventually a bunch more rhinos gang up on him. It's, Ooh, it's quite a video. 
That is a big hippo, boy. Yeah. <laughs> that is a big They're hippo. They're terrifying. He's well fed. Here we go. I'm talking about Retep. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bro. Look at the jaws on that. It's as oh, big yeah. as the rhino's head. Yeah, By it's way, not a... Is, I got a... Go ahead. Holy shit. I mean, that rhino's oh, horn, oh, that thing is a saber, dude. Mm -hmm. It looks like a samurai sword. Yeah. If, if that hippo chomped down on the rhino, that tusk would go straight through the roof of his mouth. Yeah. yeah no, it's By the way, uh, Autumn Thornburg is asking, Forrest, did you ever have any encounters with hippos in Zimbabwe? Must not have heard the two stories where you were almost killed by hippos in Zimbabwe. Yeah, one, one or two. Um, who was asking that? <laughs> Autumn. Yeah, Autumn, I have had some... There, it is the animal that I am the most scared of. Um period like all jokes aside they are the most terrifying and this video actually kind of depicts why like they're curious and super aggressive um and you see that here this <laughs> and they're scared of nothing you know he's challenging a rhino and i've had two terribly close Fucking encounters hell. with hippos one where one flipped over my canoe came very very close to to getting us and another one where one came out of a shallow pan and charged at us mouth open just like you see in this video uh, felt the heat of its breath on my face and chest before I dove out of the way uh, behind a termite mound is how close he got. So, um, yeah, hippos are terrifying. They are, you know, they kill more people in Africa than than almost any, any other terrestrial animal. So they, uh, they do some damage. Yeah, isn't it? It's true that hippos basically are one of the top uh, human predators out of animals that kill humans. In like the top five, top ten, aren't they, Forrest? Like not, more than not, sharks? Yes. Oh, yeah, way more. Not predators. That's the wrong word. But yes, they sure. they kill more people than I think they're second or third total of land animals in southern Africa. So, yeah, they, they do a lot of work. And they're very, very dangerous. They're very aggressive. Um, they come out of the water at night like you're seeing here. Typically, they're less aggressive at night. They're more aggressive when they're in. the Well, that's not true. They're most aggressive when they can't fully submerge themselves, um, mm -hmm. but they feel more confident in water, so they'll approach Ooh. you more. But they, they're scary. Yeah. I mean, and when I was a kid, I, dude, the rhino finally fucked up that hippo. Yeah, he finally <laughs> gave him what for. When I was a kid, like age 14, like, you know, teenager, full of testosterone, all that kind of stuff, we used to go to Lake Kariba in Zimbabwe and we'd stay at the fish camp there, and the hippos would come out and graze on the grass at night. And this was like a big concrete buildings with metal bars out and smack them because they weren't far they were like 15 feet from the door so you used to run out smack them on the butt and run back and close yourself in the bars and they would come full force uh like opening their mouths turning getting all gnarly and that was like it was like the ostrich egg thing it was like one of those uh marks of being uh you know a cool 14 year old in zimbabwe and how none of us died i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> well i do got to say from that video i believe i was the only one that picked rhino Rhino clearly won that fight. Again, Retep wins. You were the only one who picked Hippo. No, it's not true. Completely yeah, you were, false. You were the, <laughs> you, I uh, think you might have been thinking Rhino, but then you had caught a glimpse of yourself in the mirror and just said the word. If Hippo. Will had the ability to play something <laughs> back from a previous episode, I'd ask him to right now, but that's too much. Oh, uh, that's funny. Hey, this is while we're on the Hippo thing, this is actually an interesting question on the YouTube live from Craig Gass. Yeah. He says, and I, I'm kind of wondering this too. Uh, the five year old version of me is wondering this. Okay. Could a hippo snap a man in half with a single bite? Look, if a hippo bit somehow got you around the waist, could it bite you clean in half and mm. then snap down? So uh, that is a good question. The short answer is yes. Like the jaw pressure is enough so that it could do that, but that's not how its tooth morphology works, right? They have those big, right. big kind of canines that you can see. And those would just stab right through you um, and kind of impale you. And then, you know, it would open its mouth again. So you, it wouldn't just go through and you'd snap into two. If it had, sure. you know, say the mouth of a shark or the mouth of a crocodile or something like that, without a doubt. You know, jaws like that, with interlocking teeth would cut you right in two. But that's just not how hippo tooth structure is because they don't, they're, they're not predators. They are herbivores. They eat grass. Um, and so their, their canine, their, their teeth are not developed for that kind of biting and crunching. So it wouldn't, in theory, yes, it totally has the power to, it's got jaws strong enough to, it just doesn't have the right dental work to do that. Interesting. I mean, yeah. 
Um, so Forrest, you've got a, a desk made out of fine baobab tree. <laughs> I was with you when you salvaged it. It had already fallen. Uh, you did not cut a tree down. Uh, uh, what came across your fine baobab desk this week? What's your number one? I enjoy thing? how it changes drink, every everybody. week. It's Just FYI. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, mate. Yeah. yeah By the, the way, it is Friday night. I have to assume all of them. are. Drinking. I think yes. Forrest posted oh, the a drinking game in the chat. If you guys want to, I did. Follow wrong. There's a link somewhere okay, up there. It Thought it was important. Follow wrong. Drink responsibly, um, right? But you know, get hammered, have fun, or don't. You know, whatever. Um, my favorite thing that I saw this week. Oh, okay. I know what my favorite <laughs> thing that I saw this week was. Uh, so you remember, you know, remember the bear guy, the guy who lived with the bears, and like everybody, you know, would tune in and watch him, and then sure enough, he got, he got man? iced by bears. You're talking about grizzly yeah. man. Yeah, oh, I remember yeah, grizzly dude. man. Uh huh. He was a thing, oh, yeah. right? right? Grizzly man Amazing started a trend, right? All the you know, Jane Goodall lived. I mean, she was before him, but she lived with gorillas. Grizzly man lived with the grizzlies. There's the guy in South Africa who hugs the lions. You know, like there's all these guys, right? And they guys and girls they obsess over these animals and they start living with mm -hmm. them you're like okay like as, as a massive passionate animal lover i get it like i get i get the appeal of doing that is it a good idea no <laughs> is it awesome totally um so you can imagine my shock when i found out this week that wildlife artist and researcher joe hutton li who lives in north america decided to live as yes take a take a stab Pat, go. You go first. I'm going to say he decided to live as a, a kangaroo <laughs> in Australia. Okay. It's a good guess. Uh, hippo in uh, Australia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have hippos on the brain, sir. He decided to live as a turkey. He raised 16 turkeys <laughs> from birth and spent 100% of his time trying to communicate with them, exploring with them, living amongst them on his own property at his own expense. Yeah. Uh, he studied their communication. He tried to, in his words, get inside the mind of a wild turkey. Now, if you've ever seen a wild turkey pecking at a dumpster, you know there's not much to get inside. Of. <laughs> Look at that photo. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, I just thought this was insane. And uh, my favorite part of the whole thing was a quote from his. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pull it up quickly. He said, over time, I got better at making those sounds myself, modulating my voice to reproduce the nuances as best I could. After six months, I no longer felt like a bad singer in the choir, though occasionally I'd miss call and get a very different reaction from one um, from the one I'd anticipated. I sometimes felt acute embarrassment at how I must appear to them. My aim was to, to become indistinguishable from the rest of the flock. And this is my favorite part of the quote. But I felt they saw me as the village idiot. <laughs> Yeah, no yes, sure. Sir. Knows <laughs> they how I did. feel. They indeed. You don't look like one. Wait, of that's him? Yeah. So that's him. <laughs> that's, that's the guy. Great. Yeah, that's the guy yeah. who lived as a turkey. What a stud. He was like nuzzling them, pecking, pecking on the ground. Just turkey man, not grizzly man, you know, not not lion guy, just just turkey man. Yeah. And I thought that was just outstandingly funny. I wonder, does it talk uh, about does anybody know what his motivation was? I'm sure it's in this video somewhere, but it's a it's a long video. But imagine he must have just really <laughs> did you think he just really liked eating turkeys you think he's ever eaten a turkey and then he felt bad and he was like i want to see what goes through the minds of these turkeys i i don't know i i think he just said that he wanted to try and kind of communicate with them i know he raised a bunch of them it's kind of sweet all things considered yeah. like you see his face it's like six inches from the baby turkeys whatever but it's just such a weird thing to pick it's also not to mention like i kind of think of a worse group of animals to try and get inside the mind of, like <laughs> except for maybe insects. Right. Like we're so far removed from birds. You know what I mean? On the evolutionary tree. It's like, it's like, I'm trying to be a grasshopper. It's like, no, sir, you're, you're not like, you know, I, I, I get doing it with, with mammals. Like I even understand doing it with cetaceans, marine mammals because of their size, of their brain Turkey that has, you know, brain the size of a pea. Right. That's a bird. That's like so far removed from us on the evolutionary tree. It's, I, I don't know. It's just like, even doing it with a parrot makes more sense because they can like communicate, they can talk. Yeah, you know, there's right. there's like there's some there's some like understanding of intelligence there. A turkey just kind of looks at you with these like blonde, these like dead eyes. If, and it's if like, you what do you do? If you had the opportunity to uh, do this with one animal, what animal would it be, Forrest, for you? Oops, sorry. Um, if I had the opportunity to live with an animal and get inside its mind, I, it would be orcas for sure. Mm. Um, 
Yeah. Well, here's the thing. And, and a lot of people don't know this, right? Everybody thinks dolphins are so smart, right? You've probably heard like dolphins are insanely intelligent, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Common understanding of science is that dolphins are about as intelligent as pigs. Now, pigs are pretty intelligent. I have two of them. They're great. Um, I, I wouldn't say I'm in the minds of them, but I totally understand what they want and need. Orcas, however, are so complex that even though linguists have studied their communication and figured out things like they have different accents, they have different vocalizations for different pods, we understand so little about their language because it's not linear like ours. Like a word doesn't mean anything. A series of clicks or a series of pops, et cetera, communicates something in unison with body language, in unison with sonar, et cetera. So there's just so much we don't understand about orcas but what we do understand is that they're like insanely intelligent. They have these crazy social dynamics. So I think if I had the ability to get inside the mind of orcas, I think that would crack some kind of Da Vinci code as far as like wildlife communication goes. And it would allow people to really understand like the emotional depths and lengths of these incredible creatures and, you know, probably care about them a little more. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I think if it was me, I'm not going to go into as much detail, but I would, I would for <laughs> sure for sure go with with uh elephants mm. with an asian elephant yeah they're just i mean when you're really close to one and they look you in the eye you're like man you know so much shit mm. like <laughs> i feel like they're very yeah. emotionally in touch with themselves yeah and like the for world sure a lot of them. emotion in like, the I, eyes. I don't know man yeah yeah no, dude wise straight straight up so the guy that trained me in the bush stretch ferrera the guy who ran our safari business uh he had an incredible emotional connection to the elephants in minor pools. I mean, he knew them all by name. He could walk on foot right up to them. He knew which ones to stay away from. He knew which ones he could get so close to. He could put his hand out and they'd stop right in front of him. He knew which ones would mock charge him and stop like three, four feet in front of him. I mean, incredible, incredible stuff. And that was, a, it was a little bit of that, but he was, you know, a true safari guide. So he would look for lions and look for Eland and et cetera, et cetera. But he had an understanding of, the elephants, it was incredible. I think I've said this before on the podcast. You know, like when you look like your dog or you spend too much time around animals, Stretch yeah. was like an old grumpy bull elephant. He was six foot eight. That's why he had the nickname Stretch. <laughs> he was a huge dude. Yeah. Um, and he was just the grumpiest, crankiest guy in the world. But he was also the sweetest, nicest person ever, just like a big bull elephant. So I, I get it. I get the fascination. I I'm, I'm I love elephants. Those were African elephants, but still. Oh, Ritep, yeah. what would yours be? Um, some of the brosters have suggested pigs because I'm so close in, in, uh, <laughs> physical appearance to pigs. Uh, one broster suggested herpes, but, uh, I like, I like Matt McHugh says, I'd like to get inside the mind of a human female. That would be my, <laughs> that would be my choice. <laughs> Shit. What would mine be? I mean, again, I'm just going to have to go ahead and say hippos, you know, that's it. <laughs> he's, he's got hippos on his mind. Big yeah, time, I love them. Boy, you have one yeah. thing on the brain. <laughs> yeah. Fascinating. You're you're singularly focused tonight. No logic behind <laughs> it. Just you know, easy answer. Yeah. I'm tipsy. I've uh, herpes, really though, honestly, because you know. But you, I mean, yeah. I feel like you getting inside the mind of a hippo is a very short stretch. Like it's very. We already made so that close. joke with you're, the pigs. For us. You're, no, hey. but you're you're big. You're angry. You're I'm loud. Not angry. I, you spend I'm, most of your time wallowing. No. You know, I'm very soft in self pity as opposed to water. But <laughs> um, I'll tell you, first, you should have known the professor ten years ago. Oh boy! Oh yeah. Why? I mean, it was like it was literally like getting like getting drunk with this guy would, would be the equivalent of just like getting hammer drunk with like a trained polar bear. <laughs> like you did not know what you were gonna get. Like just Let's, ready. Listen, to kill. Pat. Before you went to anger management classes, you regularly <laughs> attempted to punch me in the face and kick me out of your domicile when we were hanging out. So, sure. you know whether it's sure. me or you who sparked it. We've we've both got issues. Ir irrelevant. Irrelevant. Today uh, we're fucking happily together and doing this shit. So we're it's, happily married. <laughs> but I was going to say to, to, to Matt McHugh, who is airing his grievances with human females on YouTube Live, I got a tip for you, man. There's a great book. There's a great book called The Naked Ape. Mm. Uh, it's by Desmond Morris, who is, uh, I, I believe, the father of evolutionary psychology, right? Mm. So it really okay. breaks down uh, human psychology from the standpoint of how did we evolve? And, uh, oh, man, you should read that. <laughs> Because it gives you so much insight, man. I mean, let me just say, Siegfried and Roy 
didn't just figure out how to make the tigers behave. Uh -huh. They learned everything they there was the to ass. know about the creature that was the tiger. Okay. And how it evolved and what it wanted and what it did. Okay. Read That's The cool. Naked Ape. There is a lot of tidbits that will help you in your lady <laughs> and man relationships. Well, so are you saying this is kind of like a guide as to how you've lived your life? Because I'm very interested in this, if that's true. I'll be I, reading well, it tonight. What I would say is that it was just, it was incredible. It's, so it's like a paperback. It's like very easy reading. And he breaks down the evolution, basically the very simple moment where uh, essentially a, a group of apes left the jungle. And all of a sudden they were faced with this huge new set of challenges because instead of the female, you know, basically a male would inseminate, the female would have the baby, the baby would never know who its father was, plentiful fruit, no predators in the jungle. Mm. The jungles get overpopulated, some of the apes leave, and now they're in the plains where there are all sorts of predators, they have to create dens, and the only offspring that would survive were ones where the male would help provide food and protection. And that oh, wow. is the That's beginning of human evolution. And so many sure. of the things about us as we are, it's, it's where monogamy is created, right? Uh, the, the female vagina moves from the back towards the front. Earlobes grow uh, uh, nerve endings. Lips grow nerve uh, endings. Female roasters, that, could you weigh in on that? I'm, I've never seen yeah. one. Um, what? <laughs> Never seen what the, the vagina comment the vagina. you made. I'm just oh, wondering yeah. if that's what, true. What or not. I'm saying is, uh, <laughs> it's a fascinating book, and there's a ton of insight into just the origin of who we are, what we want, what our desires are, and what our evolved traits, which is sort of the part of the iceberg that's underneath the water, right? Is the stuff we can't right. control. And then this little part is the part where it's like society, Instagram you know, what I watched on TV, <laughs> but there's this huge right. thing that's just like pop culture, millions yeah. of years of evolution. And that's ultimately what we want and how we're going to behave. So Interesting. I don't know. I, I, yeah. It's helped me. And great, my, great name for a book too. It, it piques my interest just by the name, the naked ape. I love it. Um, yeah. If you, if you search that Ritep on Pornhub, you're not going to be pleased. <laughs> that's right. I, I, all I all know where your mind is going already. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So, hey, tell me, look, I, I had a couple other interesting things, but uh, Ritep, what came across your um, fold-out plastic desk? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I have a beautiful standing desk uh, that I put together myself. Uh, take a drink, everybody, while I look at the show doc to see exactly what did come across <laughs> my desk. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I love this one. Have you guys seen the story about the ants that have been observed using their own formic acid as disinfectant? No. That's right. Oh, no. I actually haven't. Yeah. So they I've thought ever. they used to think that uh, this acid was used to ward off predators, but they discovered uh, professors at Beirut U uh, University recently observed that they use it also to disinfect themselves on the outside and they ingest it to kill harmful bacteria in their diet. It's pretty crazy. Oh, like imagine animals have some of the most fascinating abilities, you know, like we have our big brains and shit as humans and, and that's all we have. Yeah, exactly. And, you that's know, literally all we have. Well, we yeah. also do have no. the ability if we really put our minds to it, to basically run down an animal for several days, just chasing it until it runs out of energy. Right. <laughs> Those are like the yeah we we circle back to that but yeah let's talk about the ants yeah. that's super interesting I I'm, I've pulled it up right now I didn't did not see this headline it's fantastic <laughs> preventing ant COVID says Ben Staff but I mean imagine if we could just like you know our sweat protected us from COVID or some shit why would something like something so specific basically come to fruition through evolution right I mean it's like such well, a very specific thing. Well, again, evolution is a derivative of necessity. So ants pass food from their mouth to the mouths of their nestmates, right? They have a big colony, the big nest with, mil with th hundreds of thousands of ants in them, and they will pass food. You know, you've seen it with leafcutter ants and things like that, where they go one to the next to the next to the next. So if you're passing food, like imagine if you just went into LA, which I believe the COVID rate right now is one in 80, right? Yep. And you started passing, you know, Snickers bars between mouths right, downtown, right. you know, no hands, no, nothing. You're just, you're literally <laughs> mouth to mouthing a Snickers bar. Yeah. You know, it's going to take 80 fucking goes until everybody has COVID. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, these ants have created this, this 
major, well, they have this major potential source of infection. And so they've created this way to eliminate that by coming up with, you know, this incredible disinfectant to kill harmful bacteria yeah. so that they can successfully move things through their mouth. I mean, you know, to, to put it in layman's terms, it's no different to us with our big brains going, oh, every time we touch someone else's hands, we have the potential to pass on harmful bacteria. Let's make Purell, you know, squirt, squirt. Right. And, and then it doesn't matter what I touch. And, and, you know, it's amazing that evolution in these ants actually did that without you know, them creating anything. Right. Right. Whereas That's we have to use all the resources available to us and our big brains to create <laughs> disinfectant in plastic bottles and distribute right. it around the world. <laughs> well, it's also <laughs> funny because like, you know, what's probably the creature that you've killed the most of just accidentally in your life, just by stepping on them on the sidewalk <laughs> you oh, don't yeah, think yeah, twice sure. about it. And then you're like, God, they're so yep. complicated. These ants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they are. And they're they feel guilty every dynamics time. And oh, it's nuts. Yeah. It's totally nuts. Well, that's a, that's a good one. Rutap. I had not seen that one. I like um, to go way down in the list. Cause I know you guys have the reading, the attention span of ants. That's true. That that's is, very that's accurate. A very good point. And so Papa P what you got? Oh man, look, there's a lot going on in the wildlife world in nature, but I thought this was the most <laughs> important thing. Like what, what's going to be the thing that's going to change our understanding of science and nature. Wow. Panda bears, panda bears. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they have poop parties uh, where they gather together and cover themselves in manure, but not their own shit. The shit of horses. That's right. Excellent. Well, so, so this is very strange. So it's, it's only recently been documented. Um, they believe it's uh, a body warmth strategy uh, as they've been observed having poop parties more frequently in cold temperatures. Um, okay. But they were being filmed and, you know, with trail cameras, 38 <laughs> pandas in the Kinling Mountains of China uh, yeah. were literally getting together and smearing themselves in horse shit, like on a ranch, I would assume, <laughs> uh, and just like smearing themselves in shit and then like sitting around just kind of hanging out. Yeah. And this is this is on tape. I mean, so it sounds like this is something that must be pulled up if this is real. Uh, well, uh, it, I believe it is real. No, it's it definitely is, it real. real. It's, it was reported in yeah. live science and a couple know. other places. Um, but what a wild, uh, what a wild thing! Like that, that has to yeah, be a learned. Yeah. That's a learned behavior, I would think. For I can't sure. imagine that's instinct. absolutely, no. ab ab absolutely. So <laughs> yeah, you know, and it makes sense. The whole, the whole fact. Oh, there's that one covered in shit right there. <laughs> Nice one, yeah. oh. Is that is that a brown bear? Dude, that's a uh, panda bear. <laughs> sure is. Yeah, that, I, I thought it was yeah, a brown bear when I first saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, and, and you guys probably know this, but you know, rotting vegetation creates heat, right? So, shit, panda bear or horse shit is just rotting vegetation, right? That's that's all it is. It's compressed rotting vegetation. So, putting that on yourself, there's going to be trace amounts of heat that are actually let out by that by the fermentation of of the vegetables. That are in the poop so yeah kind of kind of makes sense it's a good it's a good hypothesis it's, i don't know if that's the reason well, but it's a good hypothesis let me ask you this so obviously we detest uh shit from animals we we avoid it like the plague we don't want it near us because it causes yeah. diseases we're, we're obviously you know we've learned that if we're rolling in shit we're gonna get we're gonna get sick or something you know we can't eat our own shit mm -hmm. we can't eat animal shit uh, does this affect other animals are these bears could they get sick from this uh, unlikely. I mean, yeah. if they were smearing themselves in some kind of carnivore shit, totally. But you know, one thing that we, we, there's a, there's a misconception. You guys know me and my fucking poop fascination, right? Cause poop's so helpful for tracking. There's a misconception about poop. If you are eat, if you are encountering pure herbivore poop, mm -hmm. I mean, elephant poop, uh, antelope poop, horse poop, it is pretty much harmless. Interesting. You know, all it is, is masticated grass and leaves. That's all it is. In fact, one thing that, that we do in Zimbabwe quite a lot is when we bring someone that's never been to Zimbabwe before, we make them smoke elephant poop. So you find dried out elephant poop, roll it into a fat cigar and you smoke it. And it's kind of like a bitter cigar. What it's pretty fun. It doesn't do anything, but it's fun. Okay. Uh, I'll make you do it when I, I can't make wait. you go to Africa. One I'd day. like to yeah, do it. It's, it's great. Stateside, please. It, it's okay. Next sure. Let me go grab out. some elephant <laughs> shit for it. Um, but my point is just that there's really nothing in herbivore shit like that, that can do any damage to you. I mean, you know, that's why you know, you never hear of people contracting zoonotic diseases, cleaning out stables, mm -hmm. right? That's not where it comes from. Right. It comes from, 
uh, carnivore poop because you know that's where there's lots of parasites and bacteria. Yeah, and you mix that with all the other body fluids, etc. So yeah, no, really, there's. I've rubbed myself in shit a couple different times, you know, in, <laughs> in uh, buffalo shit, in hippo shit, to mask your scent. Okay. So if you're tracking yeah. and you're and you're upwind, um, sorry, downwind, mm -hmm. and you're tracking, you got to cover your scent up, you know. And a couple different times, I picked up big old wet elephant poops, <laughs> covered myself in the whole thing, and continued down the line. So uh, that's fantastic. It's, it's a very it's a very effective method, you know, for if you're tracking something with good smell. Hey, uh, yeah. Uh, Brosner Ali Taggart says uh, that poop party sounds like ninety percent of my nights out. <laughs> wow, UK. he gets it. So he gets it. Like I've never. Have you guys ever gone out in the UK? Like yeah, you've been to London or? Oh, it's you know, outrageous. I, I've never. I just sort of assumed that if I went out for like a night out at a pub in London, that I'm going to get knocked out. <laughs> Why? That's just my. My thought. Well, I don't know. I just feel like everyone's fighting over like a second. <laughs> I mean, you definitely would because you're that's what I, I was mean, thinking. you're like this smug American prick from LA that everybody hates around the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. globally. Your, your jeans are just right. so tight. Brosner's way in. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I've been out, dude. And I was out in <laughs> London. I went there in 2015 with my brother and the girl I was with at the time, and we went out fucking partying and dude. They were, it was real, they go it hard. was real yeah. fun, man. Everybody was just partying, having a great time, listening to like classic rock and shit at, at like, at like oh, clubs really? at this club we were at, but like, you know, here, here, here's the other thing too. So I have a lot of family in London. I used to fly back and forth for a talk show, a late night talk show that I did there for a while. I've been out in London a lot and I'm going to upset a lot of brosters right now. <laughs> there is not one brosner listening to this that can out drink a Londoner straight up. Not any of us. Not any Brosner listening because they don't drink like we drink. Mm -hmm. They don't drink like, you know, we we have a social drink on the pod once a week. Patrick, you're a raging alcoholic, so you drink more. But no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But, you know, like like they have four beers with lunch, three <laughs> tea time beers, seven gin and tonics with dinner and then a nightcap like that's everybody in London is just insane. And so they're like, Sounds yeah, fun. you, you want to have some drinks? And I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever you have, I'll have. And then I'm four drinks in slurring my words and drooling on the table and they're about to order appetizers and it's just like oh my god there's I've, the, it's insane the, yeah. i mean if if they were going up against uh college retap i i could drink pretty much anybody under the table but if you're doing that daily you can drink all right quite all a right bit. all right all right story time let, 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 let me lay it out let me lay it out for you i didn't even want to tell the story but i'm going to tell you a story <laughs> exclusive so, i i've i've got an uncle that lives in london right he's I, I love my uncle. His name's Jeremy and he's gay and he's got this partner um, named Johnny. So Jeremy and Johnny come to visit uh, my family here in the U here in the U S a couple years ago. We all go to Mexico and I've got this other uncle. So as in my wife's husband, not a blood uncle, mm -hmm. who's this like six foot five, super jacked, like super handsome dude named Chad, American dude, like big muscular dude. I'm in Typical. college at this time playing rugby Drink, you know, drinking my face off all the time uh -huh. and chat, you know, like in, in really good shape. I think I was a senior. So, you know, feeling, feeling on top of the world and we're, we're all in Mexico together. Right. And, yeah. and Chad, be a uh, Chad, 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 my, yeah. Anyway, Chad's only like, I must've been, let's see, senior year of college, 21, 22, right. Chad's like 34. So, you know, like, like we are now at the time, big, massive, handsome fucking Jack dude. And he's like, you know, he starts talking shit to my uncle Jeremy, like in a fun way, you know, provoking. <laughs> yeah. Him. And Jeremy's like, you know, this very polite, proper British gay guy and his husband, Johnny. And they're like, well, why don't we just, you know, have a few drinks and <laughs> see who can actually drink then, chaps. And uh, so we, we start lining out the drinks. Right. And we're in we're in Mexico or at this rental house. And it's just it's just tequila for days. And we just start oh, lining God. out the drinks, just shot after shot after shot after shot. And we're like, all right, we're going to do a shot every five minutes. And the last one standing of the four of us wins. And, you know, my, my, my two gay uncles from London are like, oh, you know, that's not really how Londoners drink. You know, we'll, we'll play your game, but I don't really think it's, you know, it's for, it's like, you know, you guys might win, whatever. So we start going, right? And I don't remember how many in we are. Yeah. And I, the reason I don't know how I don't remember how many in we are is because then I woke up the next day and I was still at the bar that we were sitting and doing the shots from. And there's a picture of Johnny and Jeremy, the two gay uncles, stone face, like sober, 
you know, smiling, cheersing, and Chad and I both completely passed out, me on the bar and Chad on the floor with his shirt off, which it didn't start with Chad's shirt off. So I don't even know how it happened. I remember wow. nothing. Chad remembers nothing. The rest of our family just watched this go down. And apparently after I blacked out first, Chad blacked out like three drinks later, Jeremy and Johnny continued drinking for like four more hours because we were just so done and they were like they weren't you, even ha- you they weren't even cannot, drunk yet. yeah they were having a good night you, can't, you guys yeah, were that, like you can't base <laughs> and shitting yourself you cannot base totally. the competition between americans and uh and uh you know people from london and the uk based on you drinking against them you can't handle sir as a science sir more sir than one sir, tequila sir, every two sir, hours as a scientist this is an observational experiment. <laughs> I can tell you straight up, this is conclusive proof that all Americans are terrible at drinking compared to gay Fair enough. Here. That is yes. the end of the This you, podcast you, is going to go in the National Archives. You've proved it. <laughs> By the way, I am getting a lot of shit on the YouTube live of people saying that I'm almost finished with my drink and then I'm going to have to go pee soon. Yeah. You and do, then you people do pee are, a lot. You took three pees yeah, then, last time. During the podcast. I did not. <laughs> yeah, you did. Where, where'd Faber? you go? Oh, well, I was really drunk. So I, I started <laughs> we know. This time. We know you were. <laughs> I started off. Oh, it was a football Sunday. It's some people outside. Yeah, we were yeah. watching the game. Yeah, so no I need to explain. Right. Okay. You okay? I want to do my favorite what's in the news of the week. Favorite Let me tell one? You guys. Okay. We'll All right. It, 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 it's bigger than that. It's huge. It's enormous. It's, it's, whew, shake it out. All right. This what's in the news. I've been hanging on to it. I was excited to talk about this. Is my favorite what's in the news of the year, hands down. Wow. Wow. So, Patrick, you will remember, we went to Vietnam. We worked with the Raffidus, the giant soft shell turtle Mm -hmm. in Dong Mo Lake. Very shortly after we got back, you know, we managed to film one there. It was the one that they had been spotted in the past. We managed to get footage of it. It was a male, big giant male. Yep. Very exciting to know and confirm genetically with the DNA, DNA that there was a male in Dongmo Lake, right? Mm-hmm. This prompted, and this is all on Extinct or Alive, this prompted hope that maybe the raffidus species could survive, right? There was a breeding facility being built, there was a giant male, and there was a known female in China, right? No, sorry, wait. Yeah, that's right. Uh, right? That's correct. Sorry. There was a known female at the Shang, Shang, Shang Tzu, Shang oh, something boy. or other zoo You've in China. You've had a lot of right. tequilas, haven't you? Right, because because at that point, the in the zoo in China, they had had a male who had the broken penis. Correct, and, they and a female as well. Mm, right, yep. mm-hmm. right. And this was huge, right? Mm-hmm. About four weeks after we got back, probably the most devastating news in the turtle world happened. The female died during an artificial insemination surgery, Oof, right? right? Yeah. Meaning there was nothing but two males left in the entirety of the world, one with a broken penis in the zoo in China and the one that we filmed in Dongmo mm-hmm. Lake. Well, as I mean, I was gutted, like literally like on the verge of tears. Wow. Gutted. It's one of the most incredible creatures. It's like a dinosaur. I mean, I was yeah. gutted. Well, on December 18th, 2020, AKA That's today. today. Damn. That is today. Breaking news. The, the ATP, the same exact group of people, all named uh, Tran, Tim, all the people we worked with, Patrick, got genetic confirmation that an animal that they didn't disclose because nobody knew about this, that they captured in October, 2020 in Dongmo Lake is definitively a female raffidus. Wow. There are two raffidus in Dongmo Lake, Holy a male shit. and a female. It's and they didn't know, I mean, for all this time, they had no idea. They just knew there was the one big male there. Yeah. That's, that's a picture of, uh, well, if you're on my social media by chance, uh, maybe you can scroll through, but you'll see all the people that we worked with Patrick and it's a small one. It's a young, I mean, young is relative, but it's a smaller female. It's not like that enormous male. Um, and it's just absolutely insane. Yeah. I mean, there's hope. See, I'm much smaller than the big one right. that we saw, you know, probably still Holy 200 pounds, shit. but way smaller. But that means that this species has a chance at survival, which is absolutely so insane. So what, what then does it, does it take? I mean, so they found genetic material. Did they specifically, they didn't actually find one. They found uh, evidence of the existence of one. Of the female? No, no, that's her. That's oh, this is a picture of her. Yeah. So, sorry, I, I might oh, not have wow. been clear enough. In October, they I'm caught an animal. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the reasoning behind it. They caught an animal in October, yeah. took blood, did an ultrasound, et cetera, and released mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. But today, and they, they didn't tell anybody that. Nobody knew that outside of the ATP. Today, they announced that not only did they catch an animal, but she was indeed a female. So there are potentially a mating pair of raffidus and dogmo mm, lake, okay. which is just, I mean. 
And it, that's you're looking at the rarest turtle that's in the world. You know, crazy. there were as far as we knew, there were two mm-hmm, of them. Mm-hmm. Um, you, and so, you do know, you think the people we were working with in Vietnam knew that there might have been a second turtle in the lake when we were there, but didn't want to say anything about it? I do. Yeah, okay. I do. There were whisperings that, you know, there could be more. And it's like, you know, it's in the scientific community, you're not going to start spreading rumors about the potential of more. Right. You're not going to be like, yeah, yeah, no, there's there's others here. You know, uh, we don't have any proof to back that up. But, you know, people have told us or whatever. So even when we were interviewing locals and stuff, there were whisperings of, you know, I think there's one in the other part of the lake and maybe down at this other reservoir, blah, blah, blah. But I think the ATP had a good inkling that there was one but was waiting for some kind of proof or confirmation. And that obviously came today. Hey, so one of the brosters just asked, and I think it's a good question. Why t- talk us through what you think about the fact that they, they captured it and then re- a little different well, than and, what we saw in the Galapagos. 100%. And so for all the brosners, you know, you'd have to be on the inside to understand this. The ATP doesn't go out targeting animals to catch. What they have done historically is rescued animals from fishermen. And they have all of these, yeah, they have all of these like signs and information up to say, if you catch a turtle, call us, we'll be there right away. And so by looking at this, what I'm analyzing, and I'm very sure of this, the ATP wouldn't just go sticking nets in Dongmo Lake with the potential of harming one. But there are a lot of, there is commercial fishing. there, There is people with spears, everything that go to these lakes. What I'm analyzing by looking at the picture that's up on screen right now is you're seeing a net from a commercial fisherman, maybe a fish pen, et cetera. This animal got stuck in, this animal got captured. Mm -hmm. They pulled it up. The fisherman went, oh, this, you know, from the signs, we got to call the ATP people who are there every single day at the lake. Everybody knows them. They're very heavily tied into the community. They went, ran these tests and then likely released her. I don't know the full, full story. I mean, the details are so fresh. You know, it's all limited what information is being put out, but that would be my best guess. What do you think? um, Do you think, so a question came through the chat do you think that they're going to let them breed naturally or are they going to try and force it? Well, the best thing they could do would be to quote unquote force it. And what I mean by that is you, you want to keep the animals in their natural habitat in a somewhat safe space, Mm -hmm. right? Because Dongmo Lake's a huge lake. It's, it's massive and it's full of fishermen, right? Hence the picture. Hence the reason they know this animal is there. It's not worth the risk to this animal. What the ATP has done, which is incredible, is they have built an island in the middle of the lake with a natural breeding facility. They've got they put down sand for sandbanks. They've put down a nesting area with grass. I mean, they've they've really done. They put a raft for for uh, coming out and sunning themselves on. Wow. They've really done a wonderful job, and they were working on that when we were there. So, the, in my opinion, the best case scenario is to try and kind of bring these animals together without actually confining them, meaning putting up a huge barrier or kind of ushering them into a corner of the lake and blocking that off, something like that, where the animals can then find each other to reproduce. Because turtles don't go searching for mates, right? Especially freshwater turtles. They, they run into a mate, they, they mate, and then off they go. A, they, don't go, they don't go out hunting for mates, right? They're not like a lion that's calling, you know, what, is roaring into the savannah to call for a female. Yeah. So what... A huge lake, even though these are huge turtles, if they live on opposite sides of the lake, they might not ever naturally run into each other. So really, you you want to try and engage them without capturing what them. What if they um, got like Pauly D there and just had open bar with as much vodka as you could drink? Do you think that they would all come in and just <laughs> bang? They're... <laughs> Yes, for tap for sure. Yeah, it's very yeah. similar in turtle culture to the Jersey Shore. It, it's <laughs> really similar. It's really I love that story really though, close. man. Honestly, like uh, when I started doing this podcast with you, I always have liked animals more than human beings, just in general. And uh, a lot of the stories that you've brought to my attention uh, during the podcast have made me very happy, and this is one of them. Good, yeah. good. WT Willie, I'm sending you a picture. A lot of people don't might not have picked up on this, and I didn't state this. The Raphidus, the Swinhoist giant soft shell, the animal we're talking about, is the largest freshwater turtle in the world. <laughs> um, and I, I, that's one of the reasons it's so important, right? I mean, it is an incredible dinosaur-like animal. Now, people in Florida, yeah, you can't tell from that little picture that's up. I mean, it just looks like a normal turtle. It's so it's massive. It's the size mm-hmm. of a mini cooper. Yeah. Will, I just texted you a pic. I'm not sure if you're able to pull it up or not. Um, but it is, I mean, to keep, to know that this animal still exists is incredible. It is like a dinosaur. 
um, to try and keep them on the planet is our responsibility because we, you know, we push them very close to extinction. So Will's going to pull it up in a second and you can see what this creature is like. I mean, they are unbelievable in size. <laughs> <laughs> Addy in the chat asks, if humans were endangered and you found a female human, how would you encourage breeding? Pat? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would find out more about oh, her dude. wants and needs. Is that what you learned from the Naked Ape? No, I know I would put up a Christmas tree, <laughs> quite frankly. Uh, everyone gets very randy and saucy. It's true. You see it, it reminds you of good times your yeah. and childhood. True. And by the way, they're not there. So what are you gonna see? More human connection. How close can you get? Well, yeah, just don't got- bring up their dead family, family <laughs> so members. That's what I would do. <laughs> no, Forrest, you don't want to do that. You don't ever que- want to do that. Watch rom-coms, uh, good calls. A question that came earlier in the chat, which I was curious about, but it had passed. But now that we're on the topic of Christmas again. Is there anything? Uh, what the fuck is up with Christmas in Zimbabwe? Are you have any? You have any just crazy weird ass well, stories or anything? Well, yeah, you talked about it a little bit last week. The Brosners were asking, "Are there any more like specific stories?" I don't know. People are fascinated by the fact that you're African. Yeah, because um, you look like a douchebag <laughs> from Santa Barbara. Quite frankly, this is, that's a cultivated look, sir, and I've worked very hard on that. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see stories from, from, uh, African safari. So look, growing up in Zimbabwe, everybody loves Christmas. It's a, it's primarily a Christian area. So, you know, we get a huge Christmas tree in the downtown of Harare, absolutely massive, kind of like they do in, you know, downtown New York city. Everybody goes crazy for Christmas. Um, I'm trying to think what else I mean, are, are people, do people like, uh booze like oh yeah doing... oh yeah no it's yeah. a big so in zimbabwe the big thing is country clubs right and they're not like stuck up american country clubs they're like social clubs where people just go to hang out and so what we would do on christmas is like we'd wake up we did you know do pres- uh, presents and all of that then we would go to the enterprise country club that was where our social circle would hang out uh here's something the brosners will like now in Zimbabwe, there is no drinking age. There never was. I, I when I was a little boy, when I was uh, ten years old, my dad bought me a Pee Wee Fifty motorcycle, and literally after he showed me how to ride it, he's like, "You know where the shop is? The one that's three farms over, the farm shop." I was like, "Yep." Yeah. He's like, "Go get me a case of beer." I was like, "You got it." And that was why he bought me a small motorcycle, um, ah, and it was great. Dad's a genius. Yeah, it was genius. Um, and and yeah. he never had to go on a beer run himself ever again. But. Uh, <clears throat> So we would go to the Enterprise Country Club. There'd be polo a lot of the time because that's a big sport in Zimbabwe. Uh, Some cricket would be being played often. Um, And then we'd have our big festive. Now, all the adults would be drinking gin and tonic or drinking beer. And the kids would get served shandies. And it was up to the bartenders at the Enterprise Country Club to decide how much beer and how much lemonade went in your shandy based on your age and size. And, you know, I knew all these bartenders like Isaac, the bartender there, since I was like two years old. So by the time I was like nine or 10, my shandies were getting pretty strong. They were probably like 50% beer, 50% lemonade. Um, but when I started going to the Enterprise Country Club, you know, it was like 98% lemonade with a splash of beer in it. So yeah, right. no, uh, right. and, and even the kids would all be tipsy. Like the bartenders knew exactly how to let you have fun and then pull it back even at a very young age. And when I came to America, so here's kind of a fun anecdote about that. Uh, I started high school up north in uh, the town of Cayucas. I went to uh, high school in Cambria. And my very first football game uh, that I, I didn't play football when I first arrived. I started playing football a bit later. My very first football game I went to, I grabbed a case of beer. You know, I was like, I've seen, I've seen enough American movies. I get it. Like everybody drinks beer at football games. And I go marching into the football game, age 14, with a case of beer hanging, you know, not, not hidden, literally just holding it. Just carrying it. Yeah. And I think I was drinking one at the time too. And straight up got like, not tackled, but like grabbed, had the beer ripped out of my hand, had the police called like the works. And I was just like, I'm not drunk, you know, like, why am I in so much trouble? And it was just like, I just didn't even get that we weren't allowed to have beer at age 14. Yeah. There you go. And that is Christmas in Zimbabwe. Is that the motorcycle that you, uh, that you got bit by a snake and fell over, blacked out on while you're same exact riding, one, you know? same, same exact one. one. Yep. Hey, producer, Will, are you ready for the uh, Darwin awards? Ooh. Everyone's second or third favorite segment. <laughs> second favorite. All right. Let's do another installment of the Darwin Awards. Ratep, explain to us what Darwin Awards are. Well, 
I'm sure most people have heard of the Darwin Awards in general. That is when the some of the dumbest people who are prevented from what? Procreating forest? Uh, win an award Correct. for doing stupid behaviors that make it so they will yeah. not continue their genetic line onward. Will, producer Will, is going to play some videos that we watch. Yeah. And we are... By the way, the Brosners are saying that they hope that it's going to be more gory this week. Yeah. Uh, yeah, come on. As opposed come on, to me, who I nearly fucking fainted last week. So, <laughs> Will, go ahead. Let's pull up the first clip of the Darwin Awards. This one's called Clowns Don't Know How Balloons Work. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, let's see. Uh -oh. How does a clown not know how a balloon works? <laughs> Oh, oh no. God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, God. <laughs> That's awesome. So, oh, it's coming around again. Uh, here comes another one. Round two? No. Nah. Is he going to make it? There's no chance. That was like Blaine. That was like Blaine. <laughs> so for those who are listening to the podcast oh, oh my oh, god oh my god, god. again good oh my Lord. god Nick. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so a bunch of rodeo clowns decided to put these plastic inflatable balloons over them and run out while several bulls were unleashed into the ring apparently not understanding that a balloon is not a huge amount of protection from no. a 800 pound animal running at that 30 miles an hour. That is not a shield, hour. sir. That is a, that is a bubble. <laughs> Dude. All right. Yikes. So that's pretty dumb. What do we got? It's pretty good. Row? That's pretty good. I like that. Brosners, please weigh in. See, see what you think about these. People are saying they lost a bet. I do this as a bachelor party. I bet Forrest would enjoy being in one of these. I would. It looks like a lot of fun <laughs> to be quite honest. All right, this next one is called Snowmobiler Tailgates a Grizzly, which is, that just sounds very bad. You shouldn't do that. It ever. does. Don't tailgate a beer, a bear, a bear. I wish I had a beer. <laughs> I need to make another drink, but if I get up, people are going to accuse me of peeing. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. All right, well, we'll. Yeah, I'm getting pretty low myself. Mm -hmm. Here we yeah, go. Here we go. We got a big bear. Oh, it looks like a toboggan, a snow hill. I saw. There we go. Oh my goodness! Let's get this going well. Okay, so you got a big brown bear. Oh my god! Beard. The bear turns around on the snowmobiler and takes a swipe. Oof, that was close. I love that the bear just hard to tell. The bear just says, fuck this guy, turns around, pauses, and is like, I'm gonna kill this one. And goes for the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? All right. Okay. We have no idea what happens after this because the bear swipes at the guy in the foreground. Well, they're fucking idiots. So I they're, think these guys yeah. are fucking idiots. I mean, yeah, I think the Darwin idea. Award here is the guy just following so closely behind the bear. Like, what is he doing? Why couldn't he stay like a bit further away? Like, I mean, what? One of the Brosners, I think, maybe maybe knows something about this and says the dude's dead, lads. <laughs> oh boy, I think uh -oh. that's a guess. All right, that's let's really see the last dumb. one. Okay, let's that's see the last really one. Third one is called tourist learns not to be with two e's not to be a dick a oh tourist boy. learns not to be a dick. <laughs> you think it has something to do with bees <laughs> I'd, I'd be surprised if it did Would you be surprised <laughs> papa p uh -oh. oh here we go all right this has potential to be really bad i'm worried <laughs> <laughs> um there we go <laughs> No, oh, no. Oh, so is he hitting a, a a beehive? Oh my god! I'm trying. To, oh boy. Good. Oh boy. Listen. Yeah, he earned that. This is. Will, yeah. Will, can you play that one one more time? It kind of went by pretty I quick. Can. Let me Forrest, can you narrate for the podcast listeners? Yeah, so here's a guy. He's just standing next to a massive beehive and just starts whacking it with a with a Coke bottle. 
just a plastic water bottle. And then you just see a couple bees buzzing around his head. Cut to guy in bee coma, eyes swollen shut, lips swollen shut, absolutely tatted in bee stings, 100% deserved it. Hands down my winner for the Darwin yeah, Award. Same. Look, if you're a rodeo clown, you're setting yourself up for getting punished, right? If you're on a snowmobile and a grizzly comes by, sure, you're going to film. If you walk up to a beehive and go, I'm going to hit this with a plastic bottle and see what happens while my buddy films, you deserve to win the Darwin Awards while you're in your beast on coma, sir. You are the winner. Patrick is not enjoying this. I just, yeah. I mean, my bee on my, uh, probably two years ago when I was it's down so in, down in the Grand Canyon. That motherfucker stung. Uh, that swelled up like two days of bullshit. Oh, yeah. This guy, oh, yeah. this tourist takes a plastic water bottle and whacks a massive beehive. Well, what yeah. are you thinking? He, he deserved that. Yeah. He did. How did you he can live still to be that see old? the end frame? You can still see. So I don't know if people know this or not, but when a bee stings you, it leaves behind its stinger <laughs> with a little venom sack behind it. That, you know, what you're looking at on his face there is not zits. Those are dozens and dozens of little venom sacks still stuck into the sky. Those little white heads that you're seeing. I mean, this guy is in a coma. And I, I don't know if the brosters know this or if you guys know this or not. But bee venom is very, very close to rattlesnake venom. I, did, I had no right? It's super no, duper close. That. That's crazy. Yeah, it's very, very close in compound. In fact, they for a long time, they were trying to uh, create rattlesnake anti-venom using bee stings. Oh, no shit. Um, now... You get stung, you know, you get tagged by one rattlesnake. You know, they have two big old venom sacks in the in their mouth that are going to get into you. Mm -hmm. You get stung by 10,000 bees. That's probably worse than taking one bite from a rattlesnake. So that guy is not in good shape. Definitely Darwin Award uh, winner. Agreed. He's no gator nuts, but he, he gets it. Overwhelmingly picked the bee guy. Um, good. I like this comment from just someone named Scott. Bee guy is top idiot, which it's, <laughs> it's totally true. Now let me yeah. ask you this, Forrest. I like Matt McHugh's hell of a honey facial. Uh, if you if you got <laughs> stung by a lot of bees all the time, right? Like let's say you just I don't know, you're a fucking beekeeper, or whatever, and you were constantly sure. being stung by bees. I'm a, I'm a let, let's paint the picture. I'm a beekeeper, but I have an eight pack in abs, so I choose to do it with my shirt off at all times because it looks better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, would could you possibly build up like a bit of an immunity to? Oh, getting bit by a rattlesnake 100 percent. yep uh, absolutely right wow. yeah and, and there's guys that do that and it's funny because you so let me explain you over time if you're exposed to these venoms these toxins enough you can absolutely there's like a weird feather floating you can absolutely build up an immunity to them right and that's what people have done there are a couple crazy guys out there donald schultz a buddy of mine patrick you know yeah. donald is one of them who've injected themselves with tiny micro doses of snake venom over and over again, slowly upping the venom quantity to try and build up an immunity to these things. It's the same thing with bees. You could absolutely, you know, you'd want to get stung by one bee on day one. This is a simplified version. Two bees on day three, you know, four bees on day five, et cetera, so that slowly your body can fight it and adapt to it. Now, the problem is, do you guys see this? There's literally this like feather floating around yeah, my of office. Of course, I can't miss it. It's the only thing I see. <laughs> <laughs> like a cat. Um, <laughs> But uh, is it from Hoover? He's sleeping on my lap. She might be Hoover. Who's up, buddy? He's Hoover's. so sleepy. Um, but uh, the, what's interesting about trying to do that is you reach a point at some point, right? Where your body has to basically make a decision. Can I fight it off any longer? Or am I, am I going to go into anaphylactic shock and die? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that happens to quite a lot of people that experiment with this micro dosing and, and trying to build compounds in their system. So say, say you're mildly allergic to bees, right? Or so let's say you're not allergic to bees. You go, you know, one sting day one, three stings day two, whatever, or two stings day three, whatever. But when you get to, you know, day 150 and you decide to go for 150 bee stings, your body is either going to be like, all right, I've built up to that. I'm going to fight it off. Or it's just going to quit on you. Yeah. It's going to be like, nope, this is too much bee venom. You're done. Your heart is stopping. And uh, that's, yeah, that's, it's, that's a real thing. It's interesting <laughs> because on the, on the opposite of that, you have, uh, you know, like you'll, you'll roll in poison ivy as a six-year-old and won't be allergic to it. And then you, you, you build the allergy to it eventually, like on the opposite end of that. So that's like fascinating that you can both at the same time build the immunity to something. But really, I guess that's the immune system overreacting when you, when you build 
yep. you know, you get the allergy to the to leaves and shit. So is that possible? You think with like snake venom or bee venom too? For sure. That's for crazy. Sure. You absolutely can. You your body can have adverse reactions that that you know compound. I used to work with a guy. So I I for a long time when I was doing riparian habitat restoration, meaning fixing creeks and rivers, we were pulling out you know weeds and bad plants and and fixing the rock structure, etc. Well, here in Southern California, around riparian habitat, we have tons and tons of poison oak. I used to work with this um, Mexican guy who was part, you know, Indian, Native American Indian. Uh -huh. um, I don't remember what tribe. And he would do all this work where we would be in head high poison oak in a short sleeve T-shirt and a pair of jeans. And, you know, if I sniff poison oak, I freak yeah, out. Same. Like, it's insane. Like, I, I, I do not do well with poison oak. Well, I worked with this guy for, for many months. And one day, I, his name was Horatio. I asked him, I was like, Horatio, how, how do you do this? Like, what, wh how can you just pull up poison oak, you know, <laughs> yeah. one after the next? And then I see you tomorrow and you don't have a speck on you. Meanwhile, I'm in a hazmat suit and I'm itching my balls <laughs> off, you know, the whole time we're doing this project. Yeah. Well, sure enough, Horatio showed me something. He goes, see, this is what I do. And he reaches into the poison oak, picks a young leaf, puts it in his mouth and chews it. He says, I Jesus just chew these Christ. all day long. I pick a little leaf. I chew on it. When I can't taste it anymore, I spit it out and I pick another one. He's like, ever since I started doing that, I don't get any poison oak on my skin at That's all. That's insane. Now, I was too. It was insane. And I saw it right in front of my eyes. I don't know any science that supports <laughs> how that would work, why that would yeah. work, why digesting it would do anything. I've never tried it. I was too scared to. I mean, I react really badly to poison. Me oak, too. So I was just like, I, I can't. I'm. It's not even worth it for me to try it. Yeah. Um, well, but yeah, Horatio could chew on this poison oak and wouldn't affect him one. On day. my fifteenth birthday, I was fucking around with my girlfriend at the time in the woods, and we had uh, rolled in a patch of poison oak in the woods. <laughs> so you were liter literally fucking around in the woods, and I had poison oak everywhere you yeah. could imagine it was the most miserable fucking thing that i could i could ever experience and That's i'm bad. just saying i never built an immunity up to it from that so dude i think I, uh, yep me me and a buddy stole a uh we had a paper route and there's this one <laughs> house talking about your paper route there's this one house that would never leave us a tip and they were the farthest house to get to was a real problem we broke into their garage and stole a case of <laughs> cans of orange soda, uh, like really gross <laughs> kind, like local store, store bought. And I was, I knew at the time, cause there's so much poison ivy in that part of upstate New York where I lived that I just wasn't allergic to poison ivy. Like I, I could literally roll around in it naked. I won't have anything wrong. So we hid it oh, very carefully in a huge <laughs> patch of poison ivy. And then each morning <laughs> on the way to school, I would go retract us, two orange sodas from our case. It was Dude. really, yeah, that's my that's superpower. What, that's great. That's like, that's, that's, that's a story out of a movie, out of like Stand By Me or something. A Stand By Me like <laughs> movie. We weren't that young. We were like we were 12. Like that sounds like something like five year olds should be doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so oh, all the oh, grocers who were giving me shit up there, I was making a drink. Uh, I have a- And also taking- There was no- Boy, if I was peeing, you would have heard a fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. Nah, um, I knew to um, um, by the way, the, the brosters are asking for it. I think we need to get into it. I think it's time, boys. For what? Battle Royale. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's do it. Mm. What do um, we have this week? I got one on deck unless uh, unless somebody else had no, some plan. No, let's do it, boy. Let's do it. All right, here we go. So I got a Brosner DM from Charlie's Canines. Nice. Who said, Battle Royale. Yeah, he sent hey this guys. one to me too. Love it. It's great. Hey, guys, my dog and I love your podcast. When you do the Battle Royale, my dog starts howling because she is so excited. Here's a Battle Royale. She actually sent, he actually sent two, but here's a Battle Royale for you. He said, if you could pick three dog breed characteristics and create the ultimate breed, what would they be? I like okay. it. I think that's okay. fun. So this yeah. is very relatable. I think that's fun. Right? We're talking about dog yep. breeds. You're going to yep. make the ultimate dog breed? The ultimate dog. Like, And you can have any reason, right? It can be a guard dog. It can be a lap dog. It can be uh, wow. a working wow. dog. You know, whatever okay. you want. Like you, sky is the limit here. It's like, what What are your three dogs, th three dogs combined into one and why? Let's go snake draft, 
Retep, you still don't understand how this works, but why don't you yeah, start? Yeah, you have no okay. idea. The Brustners are already shitting on you for not knowing how snake trap works. <laughs> so. All right, I, I know how it works. I'll, I'll get it right this time. There's no chance. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, a dog, three traits. I go first and I pick all three this one first time. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you still don't know. That's yeah. how it works. You got it. Still yeah. has no well, clue. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not sure, you know, how, how, how fucking real this has to be. My dog will be able to, uh, will be able to speak English. That's number one. Nope. No, we can't nope. do that. Nope. No. All right, my dog three then. Dog traits. My You're dog picking then, traits of existing dogs. Dog. What's wrong with you? Open minded. <laughs> Fuck you, Pat. Shut up. No, come on, Retep. You got to be like, I want the legs of a Chihuahua on the body of a Dalmatian. Oh, you know wait, what I, mean? I like, thought like, we were get, talking get about it. personality traits. You can use personality. It doesn't matter, but you just get, you get with the game. Get okay, the okay, game. okay. All right. My, my first pick for real, and we're not fighting each other, right? Idiots. No, all, all as right, much right. as people do want us to fight them from the comments, people really <laughs> want us to fight these fucking dogs. <laughs> Whether or not we're fighting, my first. All right, maybe at the end, yeah. maybe at the end, but for no, time this is, being, this is we to are make not fighting. The best pet. Okay. Make your, whether or not, right. whether or not That's we are right. fighting at the end, my pick is my number one pick is loyalty. I want my dog, because my current dog, he's like 50% loyal. I need a dog that's 100% committed to our relationship who will not just turn on me at the sight of a pair at, at the sight of a warm female body. Still not a character. Loyalty. How is that not a characteristic no, of, of what? Us. the loyalty of what of a spaniel? Like, you know, of, of <laughs> you're giving Lord, Patrick an aneurysm to get through the snake draft <laughs> with your tap, not understanding. I'd like a, a loyal St. Bernard. <laughs> Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Sure. Yes, they're the All most right. loyal. Good enough. Literally. Loyalty of a St. Yeah, Bernard. If you're going to take a St. Bernard, don't go for the size. Just go for its loyalty. <laughs> oh, Retap. You haven't won one since podcast two. Um, I'm going to uh, go next here. I've won everyone since Do podcast it. two. Go for it. I spent New Year's Eve in Tokyo about maybe five years okay. ago. Went to this little karaoke bar. The group I was with were the only people in there. The guy, the owner, had a dog. It was like maybe nine, ten months old, puppy ish. Cute. It was my favorite dog I've ever met, except my own dog. It had so much energy. It was so much fun. It was exciting to be around. I didn't want to leave the bar. It was a border collie. Now, yeah, yeah, great. they kind of have the look almost of an Australian Shepherd. Um, and what yep. I've heard, as far as like if you own one, is that. Uh, they have so much energy that they can actually be a bit of a problem. Like literally like 16 hours a day, they have to be running. I but I'm going to take okay. the fun of a border collie. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you, are you getting how this works now, Retep? Or are you still well, having a Well, I mean, we have a problem with speaking the English language and not one single broster knew what the fuck you were talking about, <laughs> including me. Uh, for sure. Yep. That's that's so it's my turn again, right? All right. So I will. Oh my God. No, <laughs> it's not your turn off, again. <laughs> Go on. All right. Yes. Okay. For my first pick, well, I just because I don't offend him, I have the perfect dog right here. <laughs> He's just been sitting on my lap the whole podcast. He but, is um, Easter. he is. He's a real lap dog, this one, too. Um, all right. So for my first pick, a dog that I've actually always wanted to personally own. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for the the per body and coat. No, hold on. Sorry, <laughs> let me think about this. Sorry, the person, the personality and attitude. I'm sorry, of a Portuguese water dog. Hmm. So I've always wanted a Portuguese water dog. It's the dogs that the Obamas had. I don't want them because of that. I wanted so, but people recognize them from that. I wanted one because they love water. They're, they have hair and not fur. They're super outgoing and energetic. They love swimming. They love going on boats, all the things I love. They can surf with you, everything else. So I'm going to pick, kind of like Patrick went for the fun of a border collie, I'm going to go for the passion of water play of a Portuguese water dog. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, to round that, well, to, finish, to continue from that, I'm going to take that Portuguese water dog attitude creature and put it into the body of a Saluki. You guys familiar with the Saluki? They're very skinny, right? Like a very Not a skinny real dog. dog? Yep. Very weird looking dog. Um, I think they're cool. 
I think they're really pretty. Um, okay. Very different. Not not the kind of dog I would personally want to own, but I love the look of them. So I'm going to put the Portuguese water dog into the Saluki. That's where I'm at. Okay. So, so you're, you've lost, uh, and Ratep is okay. completely out of his mind. I have <laughs> everyone's favorite, a lot of Brosners commenting that the Border Collie is a great dog. So I've got that temperament. I've got that energy, that fun, that just zest and zeal for life. I'm going to put it's it nice. into the body, to the body of an of Charka. Oh, I knew you were going to pick that because you're obsessed, I'm obsessed with, with them. Things. I want I do a whole fucking yep. series about these dogs. Well, <laughs> if you could pull up the picture of the of Charka, I would much appreciate it. And I did text you, so you better fucking do it. Uh, it's also called a Caucasian Shepherd dog. They are Will's definitely taking a shit. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unreal. Give him a second. Um, give him a second. They are huge. Okay. 220 pounds. Yep. They look like a grizzly bear. They use them to guard maximum security prisons in Siberia. But That's they're right. very fluffy. They're just, okay. you know. Yeah. So I've got a border collar. It's fun. It's exciting. It just wants to be your friend. But it's 220 pounds and it's like six feet tall standing <laughs> on all fours. Look so at that That's thing. a good dog. That yeah. That's a so far, you're you're in the lead for sure. Dude, this is a lot of fun. That what you're dog creating with the personality of a border collie. I mean, come on, guys. Yeah, that'd be exhausting and terrifying, but amazing. <laughs> okay, true. All right, Recep, you're up for two, so you have the loyalty, the classic loyalty of a Saint no, Bernard. No, listen, Bernard. I, I'm I'm changing I'm changing everything now that I understand how the game works. I'm still okay. picking my Saint Bernard, but yes, I, I'm you picking have to. him. No, I I get it, I get it, but but his characteristic is that he's loyal my next <laughs> my next dog that i'm picking is a um i'm going for the look so now i guess i'll pick the uh the look i want the look of a uh, dalmatian because they're fun to look at sometimes okay. i take they mushrooms are. they have spots oh uh, why do they take mushrooms i'll take mushrooms and look at my dog is what i'm and saying. so the spots oh, will gotcha. kind of blend together and, and dance around the room as you have your glowing lights going <laughs> yeah there'll be uh yeah. they there will be a lot of uh of that and then my final pick will be the german shepherd because they are smart and they are what 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 what, what of a german I'm, shepherd? I'm, it's not a third the dog. intelligence the intelligence <clears throat> okay okay gotcha and the yep. paws yep. and the yep. look in fact i just want a german shepherd i i, I don't care about <laughs> anything else all right, so Peter has the pause and look. Gives <laughs> the pause and look of a German shepherd. With the spots, the spots of, a of a Dalmatian. And the loyal, so it has no head or body. It just has the yeah. pause and look of a German <laughs> shepherd. Mm -hmm. I also, I, I bet if you Google least loyal dog, I feel like St. Bernard is probably going to pop up. No way, dude. They're search and rescue dogs. Are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah, that's good. All okay, right, all right. All right. All right. Uh, uh, Innes to Winnes says, these should be the next Wild Time t-shirts, just these dogs that we've got. <laughs> right. So I've got a 220-pound furry, fuzzy Russian oak charka. It is the personality of a border collie, which means it's fun, it's excited, it loves me. It's got some energy. We're going to go for a lot of jogs. I'm going to give it the smelling ability, the scent glands of a bloodhound, okay. which are on most sites, they're ranked that they have the most scent receptors at 300 million scent receptors, the most of any breed. I will be eating truffles for days. I knew you were going to say yeah, that. That's I'm going to go out with Forrest to his friend's giving once we get the vaccine. Yep. I'm going to have like <laughs> 5,000 truffles. Everyone else is going to have a truffle. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's good. So then all everyone's going to have like a you have a you have a horse sized party animal that hunts truffles. I mean, it's course. Yeah, are you taking good, notes like you typically do so you can recap at the end? Oh, thank God, got him right here. He's so yeah. organized yep. for for very organized. Yeah, he's very organized for being a flighty, misdirected lunatic. He's very organized. Yeah, with with no amygdala. Please don't. Don't for being a total piece of shit, he is so yeah, he gets it. Um, <laughs> All right. so I have so it's my pick Craig again. Guess, Craig I guess will pick I no, no, you. sorry, next what? you're done. You're done. Oh, okay, so I have the the attitude, the friendliness, the good naturedness of a Portuguese water dog and a dog that loves going in the ocean, swimming, diving, all those fun things. They just love being wet and on boats in this very slender, unique, odd looking body of a Saluki. 
Now to add to that, because this is something I'm going to have to take care of. And I, when I was thinking of Patrick's horse sized party animal, I was thinking of him scraping up mounds of feces on the sidewalks of West Hollywood. So I'm going to add to that nice. the uh, pooping abilities of a chihuahua. Oh. So I have this this beautiful, slender, surfing, super cool, fun, friendly dog yeah. that makes little 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 nugget turds that I can literally just flick off the this sidewalk is, and nobody so will ever smart. even notice. That is are you so fucking smart. kidding me? Why don't you guys go fucking what? rub and tug each other in the back? What <laughs> are you talking about? That's smart? <laughs> a dog that can shit? What no. the fuck? What he's saying... Is that he's got this large yeah. dog that's going to shit no, like I don't a care. cat, essentially. Yeah. How are you not getting this? Uh, the dog's like se seventy pounds. I, it's going to take poops that are the size of a raisin. It's, it's this is genius. No, it's not Brian. genius. You so because so you don't have to pick up a lot more shit. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, so, selfish. Ever, so, I, I so, yeah. so selfish. So I once dog sat. I once dog sat a Great Dane. Have you ever <laughs> picked up a Great Dane's turd, Peter? No. I've picked up no. my have own. Have you ever turd. seen a Great Dane's? Uh, okay, Peter, have you ever seen a Great Dane's turd? I've seen my own turd. Okay. Now imagine your own turd. That 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 I imagine Taco Bell blood laden blood rotting no. mess very that healthy. you put into your toilet okay. on the sidewalk <laughs> yep. of Los Angeles in ninety eight degree weather, and you have to scoop that up with a bag. Yeah, well, well you're getting a lot of flack for us from the Brosners because I think we have some Chihuahua owners. They're saying that yes. The turds will be smaller, but more frequent. By the way, Big okay. X 007. One bag. Big X 007 right, is so. fantastic. Uh, you guys are idiots. Your animals are, are ridiculous. My German Shepherd will kill your fucking animals. And then if they He's need no to be idea. rescued, my St. Bernard will come and rescue them and feed no, them. No, you wrong. don't have multiple dogs. How do you still not get this? <laughs> <laughs> all right recap all right. this out here. if you Let's are go. listening to this hey real, wait, wait, real quick love these comments yeah. give us more send us fucking dms post post on the instagram please like and subscribe if you haven't already it's much appreciated yep. uh logan well, williams says the muscle and bite of a pit bull the size of a great dane and the mind of a german shepherd he's clearly trying to murder someone uh yeah yeah. yeah, love the yeah. interaction. It's super fun. Thank you for tuning into the live. For those who did, for those who didn't, we love you too. It's yeah, great. yeah. And you know, you know what we haven't asked anybody to do in a long time. Look, we don't make money doing this. We do this because we're friends and we have fun and we we drink on the podcast with all you brosners. But what really helps us is when you go onto iTunes and you leave us a five star review and a comment. It helps how to search ranking. It helps boost it in the iTunes place i don't know retep you understand all that nonsense but yeah but it, you know it's really helpful so guys we appreciate not just you being <laughs> here for the live but commenting on itunes leaving us five star reviews letting people know about it because it is growing we're enjoying doing it we want to keep doing so it what should they time. comment about i mean how i won very easily or what now that would be a good thing yeah, yeah you know maybe go to itunes and just every week just say patrick won don't write anything else five no, stars Patrick. please won. don't do that or that's that'll or look like spam. Go to itunes you could go to iTunes and say what you like the most about the podcast, who won the Battle Royale this week, um, you Talk know, about why Recep looks like a reject from the Sons of Anarchy. You know, these are good These are good things to talk about. Um, <laughs> yeah. And if you want, uh, also hit up the YouTube, though, because the YouTube videos are where the community engages. So, yeah, it's We're the Wild free. Times podcast on YouTube. Again, starting Monday of this week, we will have new content Every single day. And Joe Elvis says that I look like a cop that just arrested his buddy. I don't get that, that's, Joe. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yep. But go to uh, to find all the info. Go to the wildtimespodcast.com forward slash info. Wildtimespodcast.com forward slash merch for merch. By the way, Wild it's, it's nearly Christmas else. time. There is yeah. literally yeah, no better gift. There's that. no better goddamn gift. Cool tank of a blobfish that says my spirit animal. Or if you have that I friend, thought you were going to say Yeah, go ahead for yep, us. Go. Oh, I thought you were going to say the gift of laughter join the pod. Uh, but no, but please well, continue. Look, look you are yeah. looking for a fucking gift for your bro, your buddy, your brother, your dad, who knows? Yep, straight up. You know, even your sister or your wife, your mom, your grandma. <laughs> they would love <laughs> yeah. a my spirit animal blobfish tank. Just fucking, grandma just needs that. They need a meat tree yeah. shirt. I'll get that out before Christmas. Yeah, well, Pat, yeah. little little out uh, all those Jenna Mitri favor shirt. <laughs> <It's not laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Mitri. 
Send and, us your uh, ideas for meat tree shirts, whatever the fuck you want. Somebody just have, suggested a poop shirt. Sounds great. Have, you really have made my mother a thing because so many yeah. of the comments are surrounding my mother. They should know we make name. a should we make a, a, a Dolores DeLuca shirt? You just brought it up again. Not, you want to start talking about her address or tell her name's not, not Dolores <laughs> though. I made that up. That was the joke. Mm. Uh huh. Good what? one. Okay, she's not happy with you, Peter. And she used to like you a lot. <laughs> Listen, give me your number. I'll give her a call. We'll talk. I know you, you scumbag. Oh, hey, boy. those ones that right, were guys. here on YouTube Live, you're the best. We love you guys, man. Thank you. Love so you guys. Uh, Good night. I actually do like you two as well. Good night, Brosners. Love you. Good night. Hold on. I'm ending the stream.